students i am anapurna working as an assistant professor in institute of aeronautical engineering and this is microwave laboratory today we are going to study about frequency and wavelength measurement the microwave bench setup required for this measurement is klystron power supply next klystron mount next one is isolator frequency meter variable alternator slotted line section and matched termination and detector mount sir detector mount now before doing the experiment we have to energize the microwave bench setup that's why we have to check whether the microwave bench produces square wave pattern or not so to check the square wave pattern we have to connect the cr1 probe in between this detector mount and cr1 with the help of cr1 probe next by varying the Repeller voltage we have to energize maximum CRO, maximum amplitude on CRO. To get the maximum amplitude on CRO, we can increase the amplitude now or we can increase the mod frequency section to obtain the maximum amplitude on CRO. After getting the maximum amplitude of square wave pattern on CRO, we have to vary the frequency now. We have to vary the frequency now to obtain dip or CR bow. How to measure the dip means? If you have initial voltage as 10 volts means the square wave amplitude is reduced slightly from 10 to 6 or 7 and again that increases to the maximum value that indicates the dip. If you vary the frequency meter, we can observe the dip or CR bow. Only at one particular instant only we can observe the dip on CRO. See here, here we observe the dip. That is the frequency. Now the frequency of the incoming wave is 10.4, 10.39 gigahertz. After measuring the frequency, again keep the frequency knob as it is. Now in between. Now in between, now in between slaughter line section and diode detector, place the SS tuner. In between slotted line section and diode detector, place the SS tuner like this. Now connect the CR probe to VSW meter and vary the repeller voltage to obtain the VSW reading as 1. We can vary the coarse structure or gain structure, find our repeller voltage. Now the CPSWR is set to 1. Or we can also vary the variable accumulator position to set the VSWR um, reading as 1 on VSWR beta.
aus. Now, move the socket line, move the probe along the slotted line on left side once and again on right side to get the maximum deflection on VSWR meter. In the first case, we move the probe on left side. Then we observe the maximum deflection. At that point, measure the value of D1. D1 is nothing but where the vernier scale coincides with the normal scale. Now the value of D1 is 11.5. After that, after that, again change the repeller voltage to set to 1. By varying force gain or repeller voltage, we have to set the VSWR. By varying force gain or variable actuator position, we have to set VSWR reading as 1. Okay. Now, in this time, move the probe along, along the slotted line in right side direction. Now we observe the dip. Here also measure D2. The D2 is where the vernier scale coincides with the normal scale. The D2 value is 7.7. Now we get the values of D1 and D2. With the help of D1, D2 measure delta D that is Delta D. With the help of delta D, calculate lambda G. Lambda G equal to 2 into delta D. Now we obtain lambda G value. After that, calculate lambda C. Lambda C is equal to 2 into A, where A represents wider dimen broader dimensions of a rectangular waveguide. Now we know the values of lambda G and lambda C. Then we can easily calculate lambda naught value. Lambda naught equal to square root of 1 by lambda naught square equal to 1 by lambda g square plus 1 by lambda c square. Then we can calculate lambda naught value. After getting the lambda naught value, we can find out the frequency f as f equal to c by lambda naught. In this way, we can measure the frequency and wavelength with the help of this microwave bench setup. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.